I know I haven't been around for a little while, but that doesn't matter. What matters is I'm here right now, right stat now to talk to you about Zexal World. We got a bunch of new stuff in and I really want to talk to you guys about it. Just to let you guys know as a FYI, I will be doing YouTube full time. This will be uh, the first of many videos and I'm going to be getting a stream schedule once we have a few, um, what I want to call it, domestic issues resolved. So once those issues have been resolved, we're going to be live streaming. It's pretty much going to be an AM stream where we're going to be streaming from uh, 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. So pretty much a four hour stream every morning. We're going to be here on YouTube and uh, we'll take it from there. But now that the housekeeping is over, I want to talk about Zexal World. My boy, now I don't know about you, but a lot of people out here are saying that Zexal World has flopped, okay? And I would be one of those people who would, you know, potentially agree. Right now it's not meta breaking, but you know just as well as I do that a deck that comes out when the world just drops typically isn't going to be the deck that defines the entire meta. I doubt that we're going to have another Cyber Angel situation, uh, but I mean, honestly, right now, things are in a point where we are growing, we are still learning, and I really think that these Exceed monsters have potential to be game-breaking eventually. But right now, the closest thing in terms of game breaking I want to talk about is the Stellar Knight Control. It is busted, man. It's just way too many negates in this deck that you can run. And it's real easy to get everything set up on the first turn. And I'm going to talk to you about it right now. So the first thing I want to talk about is everything in the Stellar Knight deck, they're all warrior monsters. So because they're all warrior monsters, that opens us up to the world of warrior support that we already have in the game and that could potentially come in the game in the future. If we ever get reinforcements of the army, this is going to be a pretty busted deck. I don't think we're going to get reinforcements, but I mean, it's, it's a really, really, really good deck. So when it comes to warriors, there is one card that sticks out the most, and that is Silent Swordsman. If you don't know about this card, it's a level 4 card that you can get from a structure deck EX in Dual Links. And pretty much what this card does is once per turn, uh, it will boost his attack during the standby phase by 500 points. So if you don't do anything about this man, he will continue to get stronger turn over turn. And then additionally, he can negate one spell, spell card played per turn, yours or mine, which is amazing. Uh, he can't negate something that's face up on the field, but if you kill him, he can special summon the next level, which is silent level eight. And silent level eight is absolutely bust, or level seven. He's absolutely busted. This card allows you to negate any spell on the field, and I mean any spell your opponent plays it from the hand, negate, face up spells, and negate. Amazing card, but you don't really see too much play because it's gonna mess with your spells as well. But we don't run any spells in this Teller Knight deck because the traps are way too good. To just kind of roll with the negation thing, we also have Exceeds Block. Exceeds Block is a trap card that lets you get rid of an Exceeds material to negate an opponent's monster effect and destroy the card, which is phenomenal because it's really easy to summon level four Exceed monsters in this deck. And then we're also using uh, Stella Nova, which is busted. You can use this card to negate your opponent's spell, trap, or monster effect and destroy it and draw a card. It is incredible. So using this card in combination with the Teller Knights along with Silent Swordsman, the negates are just so abundant that you just have to get out there and try it. Also, your board won't break because you're running level four Silent Swordsman and if you really need to exceed summon him off, you can exceed summon that beast. So, I mean, it, it's, it's just it's great. Now, while we're on the subject of negates, there is something I want to talk about in terms of negates and uh, exceed monsters. We got Utopia. Now, Utopia is pretty broken because this card can negate any attack, your attack or my attack. He can just negate an attack as long as he has an exceeds material. But he's actually kind of trash when you think about it in the grand scheme of Duel Link, meaning this monster can be summoned to the field by using two resources, but even if you use the two resources, he can be floodgated, he can be it, he can be destroyed by some random jank, he can be banished, you know, you get my point. 
There is no protection on this man, and he can be obliterated extremely easily. So how good is a monster negate, a monster attack negate, if the monster itself is dead? I do like this card because sometimes it can get in the way of your opponent's game winning plays, especially cheese decks on the lower levels. I was playing in Platinum and this man tried to get in there with an OTK cheesy Watt move, but guess what? Utopia was not playing that game. So in the end of the day, Utopia is just a busted card and I really think that that additional support and in line with everything else with the Stellar Monsters, this gives one more negate. So it's just so many negates in one deck. And depending on who you're playing, how you set it up, you can pretty much stop anything. Now, uh, while we're talking about negates, I keep saying, while we're talking about negates, I do got another card I want to talk about that's not actually a negate. DD Crow, might as well be a negate. Negate your whole fucking strategy and you lose. So basically, DD Crow says you can discard this card, target the card in your opponent's graveyard, and banish it. Which is amazing because everybody's got a graveyard trick. I don't care who you are, from Chris Strong to Shirinui to Zombies to uh, fucking UA, everybody's got a graveyard trick. So um, using one, maybe two, DD Crow is really good in this deck. The problem with that is it is a UR in a main box. Ugh, it's just really hard to get. So at the end of the day, you probably do want to pick up at least one or two of these, but I will suggest that you definitely get in there with DD Crow um, in, in any of your decks. It's definitely primed to be a staple in dual links. And then my final trump card for this deck is to deal with the inevitable brick. So you, if you're running Silent Swords, or a Silent Magician, or any card that, you know, requires another low-level monster to die or to be in the deck to actually summon it. The main problem you run in is drawing the big monster that you want in the deck on the first turn. So there is a card that can help you with that. His name is Zuba. No, it's Zubaba General. Zubaba General plus your Silent Swordsman creates a 4700 B stick. Again, no protection, no immunity, no health. But if you swing it in there for game, it's game. If your opponent takes 47, they're out of here. So we use this card to either beat over ridiculous monsters, cleanse our hand of a filthy brick, or get in there for game. Just another additional tactic that I like to throw in this deck. Now, at the end of the day, what are my thoughts and opinions of Seas and this deck and all the decks in general? Well, I mean, right now, I think that everything's going to be struggling, but I think this is the best deck that you could possibly uh, use in terms of like an archetype deck. We do have the Bougians as well, and Bougians can get pretty busted if they get set up. But the problem is getting set up, and a lot of people that are playing like top tier main decks are using a ton of back row that stops summons like you know floodgate canadia etc but at the end of the day if you can get rid of that stuff and get all set up bougions are pretty broken but i do enjoy this stellar knight combo as this card or these or this deck pretty much just loves to negate and be uh you know reactive on making sure your opponent is locked down I really like that whole style. I like that style um, in terms of like, uh, if you look at my styles of do I love the beatdown style, but my control style mm, is right up here. But let me know what you guys think about this new deck. Let me know about what you think of Zexal World. Catch me in another video tomorrow, and I'll probably catch you in the live stream next week. I appreciate you guys watching this video. As always, keep it dank and enjoy the rest of the clips.
different dimension demons, conquerors and kings of the different dimension, the Triple D, were banished from the metagame and cast out into the shadows for all time. Ignored by the tier list 